What's up, my friend? Welcome to the Finding Direction podcast. My name is Stu Massengill, and I'm here every single week to bring you a passionate guest or message dedicated to helping you find your purpose so that you can live a life full of passion, fulfillment, and happiness. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for hanging out with me, and let's dive in. What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another episode on Finding Direction. I am, as always, excited to dive in with you on another week's episode as we look into helping you become the best version of yourself, help you find your purpose, live in it. And this week, we're going to be diving into the subject and the topic of the power of association. And this week, the episode is not going to be super long, but I want to share with you a few principles. And I was talking to one of my clients about this not super long ago, and it was really sort of an aha shift, and I thought that we could bring that shift to you today, and it's all around the power of association, and so if you are not already, before we dive in here, please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can hang out with us every single week, and if you're enjoying the show, please do leave us a rating. That is how we make this show better and continue to just give you a better experience every single week, so go ahead, hit that subscribe button, leave us a review, And without that, let's dive into the actual topic for today. So as we dive into the power of association, there are essentially three different ways we want to look at this today. And what you want to do is first and foremost, when we look at association, there's a quote. It was originally said by a man named Jim Rohn. If you haven't heard of him, highly, highly recommend going and YouTubing him or Googling him. But the quote that he said is that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And what it means, right, is that if you hang out with five people who are kind of lazy, not really doing much with their life, sooner or later, you're gonna pick up the habitual patterns of the group that you're in, and you're gonna become lazy and kind of fall into those same things, right? If you surround yourself with five people who are always pushing their life to another level, who believe you can achieve anything you want, who have high standards, then just by surrounding yourself with that group, you're gonna start to raise your standards a little bit. You're gonna start to expect more from yourself because you're around those people, right? Same thing, if you hang out with five people who are smoking weed all day, you're gonna start smoking weed all day, right? The five people you surround yourself with, that is who you become. And one of the reasons to get into a little bit of the depth of why this happens is if you go back to our caveman, cavewoman days, when we were in a tribe, if you did not fit in with the tribe, you were literally pushed out and you could die. So because of those natural tendencies we have from caveman, cavewoman days, now when we're in a community or we're in a tribe or we're in a group of people that we associate with, we tend to want to take on the habits, the patterns, the sort of norm that that group has so that we fit in and that we're not kicked out because again, that caveman, cave brand, cavewoman brain goes, if I get kicked out, I could die. Obviously, you're not going to die in today's world, but that's a little bit of the wiring of what's going on in a deeper sense in your brain. So what I thought we could do today is do what we call an association audit. And all this means is that if you look at the five people you spend the most time with, they've done studies, really interesting, in numerous aspects of this. But one thing that they found out is that if you take that five people that you surround yourself with the most and you took everybody's income, put it all together and divided it by the six of you that on average you would make within, I think it's five to $10,000 of those five people that you associate yourself with, right? So that's just one example of you become who you surround yourself with. So what you want to do is for this association audit, and we're just going to look at this and then you can make a decision at the end of today's episode on what you want to do going forward, right? Totally up to you. So the association audit is I want you to ask yourself, who are the five people that you spend the most time with in your life right now? And you could make a mental note. You could write it down if you like. It could be um, a significant other. It could be some friends you have. It could be some family. But ask yourself, who are the five people that you spend the most time with in your life? And then what we want to look at is there are three different types of associations that you can apply to not just the five people you surround yourself with, but obviously other people in your life as well. And the first type of association, it's called disassociation. 
All right, disassociation is, as it sounds, the people that you need to stop spending time with. And what's really, really fascinating is I was doing a little bit of reading before this, and they did this study. It was called the Firmingham Heart Study. They've been doing it for over 40 years now. And what they found out, and and I really hope you hear this because it is so powerful, is they said for every sad individual a person associates with, their chances of being unhappy doubles. Let that sink in for just a second. For every individual. So, so if you're hanging out with three, four individuals that are right negative, that are sad, you are very, very likely going to be in that same boat. Right Again, the takeaway they got from the study was for every sad individual a person associates with, their chances of being unhappy are doubled. And if you go further into some of the studies they talk about, they really go into when you're surrounding yourself with someone who's negative, someone who's complaining all the time, someone who's kind of got a, you know, the, the glass is half empty versus half full outlook, and they're stressed all the time, they're negative, they're complaining. They've shown that those actual biochemical reactions that happen in their body from being stressed, from complaining, from all those things actually transfer to the other person that's hanging out with this person. And it's linked to, you look at some of these things, heart disease, like literal things that can shorten your lifespan. Now you can go read more into the studies if you'd like, but it's so fascinating when I heard this part to go, okay, yeah, sometimes we have people in our life that, you know, maybe you go, they're negative, they complain all the time and you go, you know what, like, it's kind of annoying, but I don't want to do anything about it. And the, the reality, if, we, if we're honest here, is it's probably that conversation that you fear having with them, right? Of saying, you know what? I, I want to change things in my life. I want to you know, be a little bit more positive. I want to have a better outlook. I want to raise my standards. And you know, if you're not up for that, then I don't think we can hang out as much, right? That is not an easy conversation to have. So if you have someone around you that has those qualities, Sometimes what can happen is you go, man, I, I fear so much having that conversation, but a different way you can look at it now, if you look at some of these studies, is if you don't have that conversation, which yes, I know it is difficult, but if you don't have it, your chances of being unhappy have just doubled. If you don't have that conversation, it could literally lower your lifespan is what they found out from these studies. So all I would say is as you look at your association, first and foremost, you want to ask yourself, are there people you're surrounding yourself with that are always complaining, that are negative, that you know don't have the most positive outlook on life? And ask yourself, is it possible you need to disassociate with that person? All right? Now, if you're going, okay, they're negative sometimes and they complain sometimes and there's parts I love about them and there's parts that I also don't love about them, then maybe we look at the second type of association, which is called limited association. Now, limited association, just as it sounds, are the people that you can spend some time with, but you can't spend a ton of time with, right? They say, you know, some people you can spend an hour with, but not a day with. Some people you can spend a day with, but not a week with. Some people you can spend a week with, but you can def definitely not spend a month with, right? So who are those people that you still want to have in your life, right? Maybe it's someone um, you grew up with. Maybe it's a dear friend of yours that you have that you go, you know, I, I dearly like love this person, and I don't want them to be out of my life, but I don't want to be talking to them every single day. And that would be someone that would fall into the category of limited association. You spend some time with, maybe you catch up with them here and there, but it's not someone that you are spending time with every single day, every single week, right? That would be limited association. So again, as you go back to your five friends, as we do the association audit, a simple question to ask yourself would be, who are some people that you maybe need to limit your association with? Right, people that are still bringing some awesome things to your life, but maybe there's also some stuff that you don't really love, right? And maybe those are people you start to limit your association with. You still have them in your life, you still love them, you don't need to have that conversation that says, I don't know if we can still be friends, but you maybe just pull back on the gas a little bit, all right? Now, the third type of association, and this will be with your group of five friends. Hopefully, you have some people in that five that fit this last category, and if you do, or even if you don't, you want to make sure that you are constantly finding ways to put more time, effort, and energy into this category if you want to increase the quality of your life, right? If you're going, you know, I'm super happy with, with my friends and my circle and like I'm, I'm just flowing and crushing it in life, then you, you don't need to spend as much time in this, in this last one. But if you're going, you know what? I know I could do more. I could be more. I want more in my life. I want 
more happiness, more, you know, income, more just passion in my life, whatever it is, then this third one is the one you want to start becoming best friends with essentially. And the third type of association is called expanded association. Now, just like it sounds, these are people that you want to increase the amount of association that you have with those people, right? There's uh, a quote, you can make a mental note of it or write it down if you'd like, but it's that you are a direct reflection of the expectations of your peers. You're a direct reflection of the expectations of your peers. So if we're looking to increase the quality of our life, right, to get to that next level, to become better, if we put more time, effort, energy into expanded association, these are the types of people that hold you to a higher standard. These are the type of friends you have that when you surround yourself with them, you just go, damn, I just like want to be better, right? These are the types of people you spend time with and, and maybe it inspires you a little bit, right? Maybe you see them do things in their life and maybe the conversations they have with you are like, you know, come on, let's, what do you really want? Like, let's, let's create a life that you love, right? Those are the people you want to expand your association because if we go back to this quote, you are a direct reflection of the expectations of your peers. If, you're, if your expectation of your peers is some of these disassociated people where it's you should be negative, life's, life's a bitch, right? You're, never, you're just scooting by. That's gonna be your life because you're a reflection of the expectations of your peers, right? So those negative people, their expectations are pretty low. The expanded association, the power here is they have a different outlook. They hold you to a different standard. Therefore, you rise to that standard because it's the expectation of your peers. So what you want to start to ask yourself is if you look at this circle of five that you have, and hopefully you have some expanded association in there. Hopefully you have, you know, at least one, two, maybe more than that, people in that core five, you go, man, these people do push me to be better. They hold me to a higher standard. They, they don't allow me to settle for a life that doesn't really excite me. And if you have them, spend more time with those people, right? Find a way to be of support to them. Find a way to add value to them. Find a way to have them in your life more. Now, if you're going, Stu, I'm looking at my circle of five and you know, I have one or I have none and I want some more. The next thing you want to start to ask yourself is where are places you can go to start getting more of those people in your life? right? Yes, this is when it comes down to the networking aspect, right? Are there events you can go to around the area? Are there um, different organizations you can go volunteer for, right? Are there um, a friend of a friend that you know would be in this, this sort of circle, this, this category of expanded association, and maybe you could go to coffee with that person, right? But the expanded association are people you want to spend the most time with, and you want to find ways to be around these people more if, again, you're saying, I want to get to that next level. If you're cool with your life, you don't really need to spend a time, ton of time in this. But if you're saying, I want more, I want to get to that next level, I want to you know, unleash some more of this potential that I have in me, you want to find ways to get more around the expanded association people. All right, so do your friend audit, right? Do your association audit. The five people you spend yourself, spend the most time with, do you need to disassociate? Do you need to limit associate? Or do you need to expand your association? And once you start to move some of these things around, and yes, again, I understand that the, dis the disassociating one can be difficult, but remember, it may be difficult for a little bit, but if you rid yourself of some of the disassociation, all it does is it opens room for more limited and more expanded association, positive relationships in your life. But if you hold on to that disassociation, you're taking up a spot for someone else that could maybe be a, a better light in your life. Right, So just something to think about. So limited association, disassociation, who do you need to spend more time with? And go take this principle. And my challenge to you for this week would be, what is one of these that you're going to pick? Disassociation, limited association, expanded association. And what is one of these specifically that you can just work on this week? You don't need to do all three, but what is one that you're going to say, you know what? I know I need to spend some more time with this person. I know I need to spend less time with this person. I know I need to get rid of this person right? What is one of those that you want to implement into your life this week? And my challenge to you, because you know, we are all about action on this show is just go do something about that one in the next, let's say seven days. All right, we'll give you a week. So go take action, go implement that one thing. 
And then at the end of the seven days, ask yourself, is there another one of these principles you want to apply for the next seven days? And if you continue to look at your life through this lens of the power of association, you are going to start to notice that month after month after month, your life starts to get better and better. All right. So that is all we have for this week on the episode. I want to say thank you again, as always. Uh, for hanging out with me, having a conversation truly from the deepest place in my heart. I'm so grateful to be able to have conversations with you every single week and take a look at how do you maximize this thing that we have called life. So other than that, that's all we have. If you want to stick around, don't feel like you need to go anywhere. I have another episode coming up right after this. But other than that, my friend, have a wonderful, outstanding, unbelievable rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.